Here's a new microphone that I recently got off of Amazon.com and if I recall correctly it was actually one of their Amazon warehouse deals which is essentially just selling refurbished products that are most likely and usually returned to them with little to no problems whatsoever. It's usually just after people change their minds or something like that. So I got this for about $30 cheaper than if you were to buy it brand new and it being refurbished in Amazon warehouse deal, I wasn't very skeptical of the condition of the microphone because that's one hang up I do have and that is buying used microphones because you know people's saliva things like that they're going into the microphone and there's really no way to actually clean the internal components of a microphone. I once bought a used microphone off of eBay only to discover it was used in a smoker's household and every time I would begin talking into the microphone the heat and humidity from my voice talking and speaking to the microphone's element would start to reactivate the smoker's smell and before you know it it would, ju it would just be this really grungy gross smell that would start coming out of the microphone so needless to say I try to stay away from used microphones but again this being a refurbished model and from Amazon I wasn't very skeptical I've really been wondering how you're supposed to say their name are you supposed to pronounce it as CAD or CAD I'm not all too sure so if anyone feels inclined to correct me please do so. This is the uh, model GXL2200 which I think is one of their only XLR condenser microphones they sell. CAD as how I'm going to refer to them at least for this video most of their microphones are USB microphones uh, USB condenser microphones that you plug into your computer and you record with that way but I wanted an XLR microphone to be able to use with my mixer so this was one of the few models that they actually sell that has XLR capabilities. A one inch gold vapor deposited diaphragm excellent for recording broadcast and sound reinforcement and comes complete with a shock mount which is a nice feature that many condenser microphones don't come with. And there's nothing exciting on the box it's just your basic packaging here. So let's go ahead and open this up. I don't normally do unboxing videos because they're not of much interest to me but I thought what better time than now at least to try to break that habit. Okay, so we've got a pouch here for the microphone. So this must be the microphone. They actually give you a nice little pouch here to keep the microphone in. Let's see if I could. Okay, that's going to prove to be a bit difficult doing this with one hand. Okay, here's the microphone itself. Once again, this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's rather heavy too. It's actually about the same weight as this mini DV camcorder I'm using. There's the microphone. There's the leather case. Let's see what this is. This looks to be some sort of an instruction manual. Right, let's see here. Yep, large diameter fixed cardioid pattern condenser microphone. High sensitivity and distortion. And then we've got a frequency chart here. Frequency response chart. It does very well actually. This microphone, I've heard samples of this and its high frequency response is actually very good. You can see it's got an upward uh, little curve there uh, around the 10 to 20 kilohertz range so it sounds very good actually. And then we've got some more specifications and a one year limited warranty. So this requires 48 volts of phantom power and it's unidirectional. So this will pick up background sounds. It's not like a directional dynamic microphone. So you have to do well to get this in a use this in a quiet environment that's at least somewhat isolated from exterior noises because it will pick them up. Okay, nothing on there. And then if we go in here, this should be this is the shock mount itself that they do include. It's a nice uh, matte finish. So Take that out of the packaging here as well. Here's the shock mount itself. Now I'm not sure what kind of material they actually used for the insulation here. It's not foam like it usually is. It's like some kind of a felt or something like that. So we'll see how well this performs in canceling out any rumbling noises and things like that. Low frequency rumbling that usually gets picked up when you use these next to a computer CPU. These almost always pick up the CPU noise, the hard drive noise, and the fan noise if you don't use one of these so we'll see how well that performs. Here's the microphone itself. It's mono of course. It's not a stereo condenser microphone 
here's the XLR connector and overall nice metal finish very heavy feels very substantial I just learned that this entire bottom of the microphone slides off so you can access the electronics of it you just unscrew this bottom piece here and then this slides right off and you can take a look at the entire innards of this uh, microphone and its inner workings you can't actually gain access to the element itself I think that's permanently affixed at least the cover is but you can at least see how this thing works for different components in here resistors and things like that and this is how it's supposed to be in the shock mount so now I have it here and they don't give you a windscreen which is a bit strange because finding a condenser size a condenser microphone sized windscreen proves to be somewhat entertaining and interesting on Amazon because all of the results that I seem to be able to come up with are those for dynamic microphones so I will have to do a bit of looking to find one or I may have one in one of my junk drawers, drawers. I may have to look around for that here we are at my studio computer where I have all of my audio equipment hooked up my mixer which will be allowing us to connect this microphone up to our computer and here we have an XLR cable which I will use to connect well, that wasn't good, the microphone just slipped out of there. And I've actually got my boom stand right here, which I'm going to affix somehow, I don't know how. I'm going to get this to stay on here. This is a homemade microphone stand, actually, that I made a few years ago. And have used on and off with various microphones that I have. Okay, a little while later, and I just noticed you got to be quite careful with this. Uh, the inside portion of the shock mount. There's exposed metal here, and if you see it's not completely covered there's an exposed portion here that juts out and when you try putting the microphone in there it actually ended up scratching the finish within just a matter of a few minutes of me trying to play with this thing so you definitely got to be very careful about that it's rather unfortunate now but not a big deal it doesn't bother me let's just slide that in it's very loose and wobbly you got to be careful with that most every other shock mount that I've used in the past with condenser microphones you have to actually clamp them open hold them open so that you can insert the microphone whereas this one kind of just slides right into place and there's nothing really much holding it in place so if you turn this upside down be careful the whole microphone will slide out like I just did a moment ago off camera let me see where's the other there should oh here they are let's do that let this slide in a little more and I actually have this mounted on an angle so that's why the logo and this center icon is partially obscured by this of the shock mount just so that I can have it facing dead center at me. Now I'm going to plug this in and do an audio test and I have to dig out a patch cable so I can patch into my mixer and do an audio test of this microphone. Turns out I actually had the shock mount mounted incorrectly. It's supposed to be in such a way that the if you're looking straight on at it that these little clamps that you use to open and release the shock mounts grip on the microphone are to the left I had them on the opposite side they were facing to the right so the whole shock mount was upside down and that's not the right way you're supposed to have it here's the microphone the XLR cable and an old windscreen I found from an old condenser microphone I had lying around and now we can do our audio test okay I've got you patched in directly to my camcorder and we're getting a direct audio test of this CAD GXL 2200 microphone and I'm running this right now without any EQ of any kind and just some AGC which my camcorder does to anything plugged into its microphone jack and aside from that it sounds very good and you can make it sound even better with just a slight high-end frequency boost as well as perhaps just a bit of the bass frequency let me turn this up a little more and now you can and now you can definitely see that with the EQ it sounds a lot better even better than running it with flat EQ so using just some minimal EQ settings on here you can really get this microphone to sound 10 times better and you can get this microphone to sound like a microphone that would cost 10 times more and it actually sounds very good surprisingly and will probably most likely sound even better when I'm running this with some audio processing uh, dynamics compression and things like that 